Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add a really colorful and fun animated background to different sections and widgets inside Elementor. So I was inspired to make this tutorial because I found this really cool tutorial over here on Red Stapler. And if you're not familiar, Red Stapler is a really good source if you wanna learn how to do fun and creative uh, CSS tricks and anything along those lines. This is a great resource. So he has really good articles, gives you all the code. He has a great YouTube channel. So it's a really uh, good resource. If you wanna learn how to do stuff uh, hard-coded with CSS and HTML and that type of stuff, what I like to do is see if I can take examples like this and add it inside Elementor. So that's what this video is. And before I continue, let me show you exactly what it is that he was able to pull off and what we're gonna cover in this tutorial. So the effect that I'm looking to pull off in this tutorial is if you see right here, this animated color background, um, I really like the way he did that. So we're not gonna cover this tilting thing, that's a different uh, tutorial, but I wanted to just learn how to animate a CSS a color background like this inside Elementor. So I have a good working example right over here where in this tutorial, I'm gonna show exactly how I was able to do the very similar effect within this row or this column right here. And I'm also gonna show you how you can add that effect on a hover. And then I'm also gonna show you how if you just wanna add a subtle uh, animation background like on a button. So that's what we're gonna cover in this tutorial. We're gonna cover these three different things and how I was able to pull off with just CSS. So let's just jump right into it and get started. Okay, so here we are on the back end of an Elementor page and this is the CSS code. Um, all of this stuff is gonna be in the description below. I'm gonna have a link to our website with all of this code so you can grab it and use it for your uh, websites. Let me go ahead and explain how we're gonna do this tutorial. We're gonna do it where we'll start with this one first. So how I was able to have this column with the background. Then we can move over to the hovering. It's a little more advanced and then just the button. So I wanna do it in that order. So you can follow the chapter markers below. So this is how we have the page set up. We just have a section with a color background. So if you click here, we have this uh, color right here as background. We have just the three different columns and it's just a simple, uh, let me go into here. I'm actually gonna open up the navigator so you can kind of visually see. So I'll kind of bring that over here for now. So you can see each column has just an image, a header, the text area, and a button. So it's very simple. I just wanted to show how you're able to pull this off with multiple widgets inside the columns here. Okay, so you don't need to do anything else to the section. You could just have, you know, whatever padding, whatever you may need to make it look good. You wanna have a little extra padding because as you can see, it might leak over with the blurring. So you wanna make sure you have enough room in your uh, section here. So the first thing to do is go over into the column that you wanna add this color background and add a unique uh, CSS class right here. So in this example, all of these are gonna be called uh, BG Animate. So I'm just gonna call that for all of them and all the different sections to keep it easy. Now we can jump over into the custom CSS over here. And I do recommend having Elementor Pro to follow this tutorial. It'll just be a little bit easier. You can do this um, without Elementor Pro, but it makes it so much easier because you can view it right here on the page in real time and make the edits. So um, like I said, you could still do this, but you're gonna have to put this code into your customizer instead of over here. Okay, so let's just paste in that code from the website and I'm gonna go through each of these items and what they do and how you can change some of these values up. So like I said, just go over here to the cog, click settings, go over to advanced, add that code right here and you should automatically see that pop up right here. As long as you call this the same as I have it here. So this class is called BG Animate and you have to add the CSS right here after. And this is basically just saying, okay, this content, it just needs to have something in there. So if you remove this, uh, it's gonna disappear. So it's not gonna work correctly. So you need to have that code in there. And this right here is where basically all of the magic is happening. This is where all of the colors are coming from. And let me refer you over to a really cool website over here. This is called cssgradient.io. Um, this is a really cool website I recently found because what it does is you can do a really complex uh, gradient here. So what you can do is add different um, colors. And in this case, I just have it for every 10. I have a different color. So it's like all just the rainbow colors. So once you add that all in here, if you scroll down here, this is what's really good is they give you the CSS code that you need. So 
if you go to this website, add in your colors, grab this code, and now you're gonna be able to change it. So if you see in this example, I had like a blue and a purple, there's only a couple colors. So if we go in and copy that code, I'll override what I have here. You can see it's gonna to turn to rainbow colors. So it's pulling all of these colors from that website over and adding it to the background. The next line is uh, the repeat. So you need to be able to tell in the CSS how you can repeat this background linear gradient. So in this case, uh, this will work fine. You're at 0%, 0%. So the gradient color starts here and then you could stretch it 300% and then you wanna make sure it's at 100. So you can play around with these values a little bit, but if you see right here, it's not gonna get stretched as much. So you can go to like 500 and it's just basically stretching it further. But if you have your speed uh, down here, it's gonna be a little more dramatic. So I think like a two or 300% is fine. You're gonna wanna make sure you have your position at absolute. And this is a pretty important step right here is you wanna make sure you got your Z indexing uh, under control because if you don't, this can get you know messy really quick. So I found doing these experiments that if you put this Z index to one and change everything else, it's gonna make it a little bit easier. So if you're not familiar with what Z indexing is, it's basically how you can overlay different elements on a page and kind of give it a priority. So the lower the number, the lower underneath. So you can have multiple layers on top of each other. So just think of it as like layers. So in this case, I wanna always have the background gradient that we added as a one. And so what you have to do is if I go into here and you can see right here, I already have this at two. Before you do anything else, you wanna make sure all of your elements that you want above the gradient have a higher Z index number. So you can see, I just clicked the image inside the column here. And if you go under advanced, you just change the Z index right here. So ideally, like I said, you wanna have everything at at least a two and above. It's gonna make your life so much easier. So you can see right here, the header has a three. I can change that to two. And this has a four, change that to two. So I was just doing some experiments, but yeah, these all are at two and the button Let's make sure that's added to. So right there. Perfect. Okay, so let me hit update. Let me make sure that this is all working so far on the front end of the website. And yep, you can see everything's coming through. The image is clickable. The button is clickable. This is animating. So far, so good. Now let's jump back into that CSS code and make some other modifications so you can understand how this code works. Okay, the next one is uh, inset. In this use case, I found that zero is probably the best case, but let me change it to different values so you can see what it does. It's kind of like indenting the effect. So if I go 20 pixels, 30 pixels, 50 pixels, you could see it's kind of going inward. So I do recommend not going below zero pixels. So what I mean by that is don't start going into the negatives because if you start to go in the negatives, you're gonna run into some issues. So you can see right here, I changed the inset to negative 100. And the reason why I don't recommend doing this is because if you switch over here into mobile mode or anything that is outside that container, you're gonna see right here, it now is stretching your page. So that's why I do not recommend doing this. So the way you would have to do this, you'd have to do custom uh, meta queries just to fix this uh, inset. So. I don't know if there's a, ever really a use case that you would wanna have it go negative. I think that wouldn't work very well. So let me get out of responsive mode, get back into here, put that to zero. There we go. Okay, so this is a fun little part. So the filter, blur, I have it at 10 pixels. So if you see right here, there's a blur of 10 pixels on the outside. So if you just have zero, there's not gonna be anything going on. It's gonna be very clean, crisp corner. So you may want that. And if you don't need a blur, you could just take this line out completely and it will still work fine. So in this case, let's uh, let's go 20. So add it a little bit more and let's do a test. Make sure that in responsive mode, it's fine. Yeah, we're good. So you don't have to worry about if it blurs outside of that those uh, container right here, it's not gonna make the browser uh, scroll. So let me change that to 60. Make sure that that is not gonna make you scroll. Yeah, you're fine. So you can do it at a higher number and it's not gonna mess up anything. So that's good to know. But let's just keep this at like a 20. So the next part is 
declare it in animation and for how long. So this code right here, animation, and I just kept this the same so it keeps it easy. So this is animating, and then down here you declare that same name under keyframes, and you just do the background position. So this right here is where if you need to speed it up or slow it down, this is going by seconds. So right now, it's going every four seconds, it's going all the way and coming back. So if you want to make it a little slower, so let's make it um, eight. So you can see it's a, little, a lot more subtle which is, you know, like I said, whatever your use case is, you can change the seconds here. Uh, linear is just going from one point to the other, and infinite just means it's gonna just keep going forever. And if for some reason you don't want it to loop forever, you can always just change that to a number. So in this case, it was three. And what it does is it will loop it three times and then stop. So you won't see this happen in the back end browser. You actually probably have to go into the front end and do a refresh and test it out. So let me change that back to infinite. So uh, let me change that back to eight seconds. And like I said, this uh, you can change these keyframes around, but this is a uh, pretty standard. So it's 0%, 50%, and 100%. And what it's doing is taking the background position, going 50% one way, 100, and then back. So it's pretty, pretty standard, just kind of a simple animation going left and right. Now, one cool thing is like in this example right here, um, he has it at a 45 degree angle, the animation. So if we go back into here, uh, you can go back and instead of uh, 90 degrees, you could type in 45 right here and you can see it's starting to go this way. So that's what's fun. And on this website right down here, you can actually go down here and change that percentage right here and it will update up here as well. So. This is a really good website. If you're gonna be doing this type of stuff, I recommend uh, bookmarking this because creating this stuff uh, manually is hard to, to visually see. So that's why this website's really good. And that's it for this section right here. So now this column, if we go back into the front end, let's hit update to make sure everything is working correctly. I'll take that off and there you go. It's now animating at a 45 degree angle with a nice blur. So this is, could be a really cool effect. Um, like I said, you can add this pretty much anywhere inside Elementor, all we have to do is just remember wherever you want that effect, you need to add the CSS class. So now let's go into something a little more advanced and that would be, let's say I only want that effect when you hover over a whole section, or in this case, a whole column. So when I mouse over, let's have that animation come in. So to keep this easy, let's remove that class so it's easier to see. Let's go ahead and add uh, a different class here. So the way it works is we need to declare a different class if you wanna have a hover effect. Um, it's just the way that this code is working. Uh, it would be really long and complicated to try to do it all within class. So it's easier in my opinion, just do a second class for just hover effects. So in this case, let's just call it BG animate two. So like I said, this is only if you're adding a hover effect. So let me grab the code over here and I will paste that back in over here. So now here's the hover code if you need to have a hover effect. So as you can see, when we hover over this column, it's animating the background similar to what we had over here. So it's pretty much the same code down here, just a few things might be different. So this right here, the very first thing is you wanna make sure that it's at BG animate two, which is what we call this column. So this is where the hover uh, class is coming in. So we need to just make sure that that says hover here after. So this is the same, the background color is the same, this is the same. Uh, this is one thing that is a little bit different. The Z index is at a negative one now. So this is happening because we need to make sure that this background is always gonna be animating behind what you're hovering. Um, so, like I said, this is the same Z index. So, in this hover effect, you actually don't really need to worry about Z indexing too much because that negative Z index is just going to take over. So, we can actually remove the Z index here on these things for the hover effect. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, these things have a zero index, Z index, and the column has a negative one. So, just remember if you're doing the code for hover, it's just gonna be a little bit different. And this is the same right here, zero pixels for the inset, uh, blur, eight, everything else is pretty much the same here. I just declared the uh, name here is BG animate two to keep it easy. And this is all the same. 
So that's how you do the hover. Next, let's move over into how we can add this right here just on a button. So in this button example, it's very similar to how we have it over here, just a few small tweaks. And that would be the very first thing is most of the time when you have a button, it's going to look like this. Uh, let me turn this off. So if you add that same effect, you're going to notice this is what's going to happen in most cases. So this is happening because inside Elementor, these buttons automatically will stretch to the width of the container here. So to fix that in Elementor Pro, you can just go to position under width, just do it as an inline. So now this is going to just sit and only fill the width of the button itself. So this is a really good case where you need to go into here and not make it full width. So the only difference between this and this uh, whole column over here is you need to actually make sure that the Z index is on. I know it's a little confusing with the Z indexing, but that's why um, I wanted to cover it in this tutorial because in some cases you may need to have a Z index, sometimes you don't. So if you run into issues or not showing up, just start playing around with the Z indexing and that should fix your problem. So that's happening because over here in the custom code, we have it as a negative one. So if we turn off this or make it a one, the effect's not going to show up correctly. So if I actually just remove the Z indexing, it's not going to show up. So in this case, I just needed it to be declared anything above a negative one. So if you don't have anything in there, it's not declared at all. So you can just have one or two. I can just keep it at two and it will work just fine. So that's how you can do a button with an overlay. So if you'd like to just have the animation happen on the button without a hover, uh, very similar to the code over here, we might just need to adjust the uh, Z indexing. So if we go into here and it's called BG Animate, we have that's called BG Animate over here. We have this Z index at a two. And if we go over here, so I found that you may need to play with the Z indexing depending on how the uh, animation is gonna be playing or what widget you have it on. So in this case, we had to go back to a negative one because we wanted to make sure that the button's always hovering over it. Because if I make this a one, you're gonna see it's putting the animation over the whole button. So depending on the widget and that's just how code and HTML works, uh, you may need to push it back. So that's what a negative one Z index does. So here we go. So if you have a button or some other widgets and the animation's playing above it, just go into here, change that to a negative one and declare this at least something. You have to make sure that it's at a one or a two, anything above a negative one. So in this case, I'll just add that as a one. And before I end this video, I'll just give you one other bonus uh, tip, and that is how we can make it where when you hover over something like this, a whole column, you wanna be able to change the colors of the header and let's have the P tag right here. So this is just a simple uh, text editor with just a normal uh, paragraph text. And then this is an H2, I believe. So if we go here, an H2. So I know there'll be cases where if you change the background color, you wanna be able to change the text. So you can do that with one simple line of CSS. And let me add that in here for you right here. So as you can see, this is the animate to hover. It's just the code we have before. And what you can do is add this line of code right here. And as you can see, I can have it where it changes the color right here. So let me, let's take a look at the code. So we have BG animate two, which is the hover H two comma, and then declaring the whole class over again. So uh, BG animate two hover P tag, and then let's change it to uh, black, like a three, three, three. So as you can see, this works fine for that, but how do we get it to work with this? Um, I believe this is an Elementor um, important issue. When you have CSS, you can add uh, different uh, levels of priority for your tags. So I think what Elementor is doing is if it's a header, it's declaring it somewhere else and giving it priority. So what we can do is actually go into here and just throw in the word important and it will work. So as you can see, when we mouse over this whole uh, column, it's changing that text color right when we mouse over. So that's a really cool use case. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope that this was helpful and maybe you can use this on your designs. If you have, let me know below and I'd like to see what they look like. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that bell to receive notifications when I release more Elementor tutorials like this. Thanks again. This is Mark from Wiki Design.